Hi, if you're just stumbling across this video uh, from YouTube and you have no idea what it's about, this is a channel uh, for my research project called Embodying Autism, which is being run from the University of Adelaide. Uh, obviously, that's about autistic bodily experiences. If you would like to know more about the project, there's an explanatory video on the channel, which I will link in the description box. Um, you may actually be able to participate if you're over 21 and living in the countries that um, are, can, are eligible to be included. So if you are autistic and might be interested, check that out. Um, if you already know what the project is about, this video will just be to answer some questions. I'm going to post a few of these videos throughout the project, just update people, let you all know how the project's going if you're interested, um, and addressing any questions that people might have as we go through. Uh, I also say so at the beginning of sentences a lot, I didn't realise until I watched back the first video. Um, it's just a thing that's going to happen, so I hope that's not too distracting. Uh, so this video is, so, this video is in response to some questions that I got from Catherine Inier on Facebook. Uh, they're great questions, so I wanted to answer them properly. Um, the first one is, would I consider using a forum or an online space other than Discord for people who are a little bit, uh, less familiar with technology or aren't so, un or aren't so comfortable with it? Um, Catherine felt that Discord might be a little bit intimidating, um, and yeah, that was a really good question, so I wanted to answer it here. Um, so yeah, I'm absolutely happy to use an alternative forum if there's one that can meet the project's needs and be easier to access. Obviously, the aim of this project is to be as accessible as I can make it, so um, yeah, I. If anyone has any suggestions of something they think might be better, please put them in the comments or email me or check out my social media, it's all in the description box. Um, but before anyone makes a suggestion, I wanted to explain why I chose Discord. Um, because it can be unfamiliar to people who don't spend a lot of time in particular online spaces. Um, so firstly, uh, I chose it uh, because it can be a nice private space, the only people who have access to it are people who are invited, which means it protects the privacy and security of the space, and if there are, you know, uh, any concerns about that, people who are there can feel a little bit safer. And going on with the theme of safety and security, I'm the only one running the project, and so I am responsible for moderating it and having everything in one closed space is a lot easier for me to moderate and make sure that everyone's safe and comfortable um, because we want the research to be a pleasant experience and not something that might, makes people uncomfortable or unhappy. Um, the second reason is because Discord provides a way to uh, divide conversations up into discrete spaces so you can have different discussions about different topics running at the same time. Um, and not sort of getting in the way of each other if they were all in one big central space. Um, and it also allows, if people wanted to do a one-on-one -on -one interview with me, to use voice and video chat as well as text. Uh, the main project will just be in text because I think for a lot of us that's a lot easier um, and it can work with certain accommodations for people as well. But if people want that option, Discord also provides that. Um, if you are someone who's a little intimidated by using a new form of technology, don't worry about it. I'm absolutely here all the time to help people get to learn the new space and to talk people through um, accessing it and how to use it once you're there. If there are um, enough people who uh, would benefit from it, I might do a video specifically just how to get to Discord how to use it, the basic functions and everything, or and or a, um, uh, a printout or something like that so that it's easier for people to access and feel um, comfortable using. Um, so yeah, if you do think there's a better option than Discord, let me know. Uh, Discord is something that I'm personally familiar with, which is why I knew it would suit the project, but if there's something better, I'm happy to consider it. So the second question that Catherine asks is, will I actively seek to include people with high needs? And the answer is yes, but unfortunately there are limits 
to the project because it is such a small project and I'm the only researcher running it. Um, I have done my best to set things up in a way that makes it more accessible for as many people as I can. Um, but I have to acknowledge that there are limits and that it won't be accessible to everyone. So what I'm going to go through now is the accommodations that we are able to make. Um, if you have any suggestions, again, I am happy to hear them. Um, and if I'm able to accommodate them, um, I absolutely will because I want this to be a project that includes as many people as possible because we shouldn't just be hearing from one type of autistic person, one type. Um, we want to get as many voices as possible. So the issues that I'm able to address in the project are um, firstly, at the beginning of the project, we're going to have some group discussions about how we'd like to run things. And one of those discussions is going to be around protocols about how we communicate um, so that we can support people using um, accessibility tools like voice to text and text to voice um, or other tools like that. And the reason we'll discuss that at the start rather than me dictating it from here is so that we can best suit the needs of whoever's in the group at the time because obviously depending on what tools you're using there might be different needs. Um, uh, and for people who do struggle to communicate via text or just generally, um, for starters we're all going to be having that issue to some extent or another. Um, and it's perfectly fine to have someone help you access that space and to help you communicate what you want to communicate if you think that might be something that you need. As long as your um, what you want to say is coming through, however you want to say that or however you want to put that into the research is entirely up to you. For people who have difficulty with memory, um, I don't know if this is going to apply to anyone or if this will be helpful in the particular group we end up with. But if it is, I'm going to be able to do summaries within the Discord space, where, which I'll just put in a space of their own so they're easy to find. Um, summaries of each discussion so that if you've been out for a little while and you've forgotten what was going on, you can go and check in. Um, or if you're someone who has difficulties, difficulties with short-term memory, you just have that refresher there to be able to go back to so you don't feel like you have to keep asking or which is fine, by the way, if you want to just keep asking, we're all going to understand. Um, but it might just be easier for you to have that resource there. So that's another support that I'm going to try and incorporate if anyone needs it. Um, and also I imagine that many of us will have limits to how long um, and how frequently we can participate in these kind of discussions, um, which is why the project's running over several months so that you don't have to commit big chunks of time. Um, however, I do recognize that some of us will benefit from structure. So if there are people who would like to include a structured component, um, we can discuss that again at the beginning of the project. So if there are people who benefit from set meeting times, we can do that even if not everyone's able to participate in that particular aspect, the way the project's set up we can accommodate people who don't want that high structure and who do as well. So hopefully that'll make it a bit more accessible. Again, I'm not thrilled that there are limits on who's going to be accessing this. Unfortunately, that's the reality of running such a small project. Um, the thing about this project is it is a preliminary study and I am hoping that uh, once this is completed, it's going to form a sort of introduction to this field of research that can go on and then we can include a wider variety of people um, because there are a lot of intersections of identity, there are a lot of different um, aspects of autism that just aren't going to be covered in a study of this size. So it really is just an introductory one, but I think it's a very important one because it's a discussion that's not currently being had in a lot of places. Um, so if you're participating, I think you're really contributing to the knowledge and the understanding of what it's like to be us uh, and to live as someone who's autistic. So um, I really appreciate anyone who's signed up already or who's going to sign up. Um, yeah, so again, thanks for your time and I hope to chat to you soon. Bye.